Hey everybody. So we are working with equivalent fractional amounts and you can hear the word equal in the word equivalent, right? And that's really all it means. It's two different fractions that equal the same amount. That's pretty much it. And you even did a hands-on activity where you saw and you created your own equivalent fractional fractions. You had a paper and half of it was shaded in and you knew that that fraction that represented that amount was one half. Well, then when you folded it, you got a different fractional amount, if I can think of each one of these as different parts of the whole, you saw that now there were four parts of the whole and how many would be the same amount as having half? Two, so two fourths or two copies of one fourth, one fourth is the same as both of these, one half. So one half is one big piece, two fourths would be the same amount, but it would be in two smaller pieces. If it was something that you were eating, like a part of a candy bar, the same amount would be in your stomach, right? Whether you ate one half of the candy bar or two fourths of the candy bar, the amount is the same. It's just instead of one big piece, two fourths is two smaller pieces, but it adds up to the same amount. Another, if you folded it again, you might have gotten a sheet of paper that looked somewhat like that. And in that case, to find out how many parts were in the whole, you counted them all up and you found out there were eight. So now I know to call each one of these eighths, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And how many eighths would I need to give you if I wanted to still give you one half of the candy bar or whatever it is? I would need to give you one, two, three, four. So four copies, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, and one eighth. So I'd need to give you four eighths if I wanted to give you the same amount. And if you continued, you probably, you could have kept folding it and gotten eight sixteenths. And if you could fold it even more, even though it gets really, really little, you probably found 1630 seconds. I think that's how you say that. But that fractional amount still would equal one half. And those are just equivalent fractions. And it's a really, really important concept in fractions. It will help you a lot to be able to identify equivalent fractional amounts and generate them, which just means create them. And that's kind of what you did on the paper activity, didn't you? Well, let's go on and talk about equivalent fractions on a number line. Whenever I see a number line, or we also can call this a linear model, um, I always look for where one hole is, because it's not always going to be right here. But in this case, I see nothing, one hole. So they're talking about the distance between here and here is one hole. They're wanting to model that or represent one hole. If I was going to take this and divide it into two chunks, how much would this be from here to here? The distance from here to here would be one half of the whole line, right? Sure. So let's talk about equivalence now. What if I decided instead of having two big parts of the whole, I wanted four smaller parts. So I could do one, two, three, four. So I'd have one, two, three, four. What would I call this amount from here to here? One fourth, because it takes four of this amount to create the whole. So I'd call that one fourth. Well, from here to here is one fourth. Then how far is here to here? Two fourths. Two fourths. Um, what about if I went the distance from here all the way to here? That would be one fourth, two fourths, and three fourths. And finally, if I was to go the whole way, how many fourths would that be? Four fourths. And already I can see some equivalent fractions. Um, do you see two different fractions that represent one half of the linear model or the whole? If you said one half is the same as two fourths, you have identified equivalent fractions. I could say, say this was your house and this was school. I could say I walked one half of the way to school or I could say I walked two fourths of the way to school. And that would be the exact same fractional amount of the distance to school or the distance to the whole. Do you see any other equivalent fractional amounts? If you said four fourths is the same as one whole, you're right, those are the equal, they are the same amount. Let's say we want to go ahead and divide this into eight parts. So instead of just four, I want eight parts. 
sorry, I wanted to get my blue marker. What if I wanted to make this into eight parts? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I have, let's just check and make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It takes eight of this amount to create the whole thing. Therefore, I can call from here to here, one eighth. So if I walked this distance, I walked one eighth of the way to school. Well, if here to here is one eighth, what's here to here? Or here, sorry, two eighths. How about here to here? That would be three eighths of the way. What about here to here? I'm running out of space. I'm just gonna write it right underneath and it'll say four eighths. And let me make that so you can see four eighths. Well, from here all the way to here would be five eighths and you're already have probably already filled yours in seven eighths. And finally, if I have the whole gone the whole distance, it's eight eighths. So now do you see some more equivalent fractions? If you have said, I can say one half another way as well. I could say one half is the same as four eighths. You would be exactly right. One half of the way to school, four eighths of the way to school. I better include this in my collection of different fractions that represent one half. I also see some ways that I could represent one fourth of the way to school. I could say I walked one fourth of the way, or I could say I walked two eighths of the way. Do you see any more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet you saw this one. Three fourths of the way is the same as saying six eighths of the way. Um, there's just smaller parts if I have eighths and a little bit larger parts if I have fourths. And then you might have also seen that eight eighths is the same as one whole. So create your own number line or linear model and see if you can create some equivalent fractions. Um, let's, you could try one using thirds. And let me just show you quickly how I might draw a linear model using thirds. I would draw my model. And then if I want to create thirds, it's a little harder than halves and fourths, but you can just put your hand in the middle or your finger and just do lines on either side and you'll end up approximately with thirds. Of course, models, again, we don't rely on the model to tell us the answer because I can't trust that these distances are exactly the same amount. But if I'm calling it a third, I can be sure that they're the same amount. So this would be from here to here is one third, two thirds, and I don't actually really like what that is. I think I want it there, two thirds, and then three thirds is the same as one whole. So what you want to do now is what if you made it into six parts? What if you made it then into 12 parts? And that's what I want you to do in your math journal as you're creating and generating and identifying some equivalent fractions.